about to see, there's a lot more to their world than just barbells and bikinis. bring out the professional lady competitors. It's one of the premier events in the world of women's bodybuilding, the Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio. For some, it's a showcase. For others, a freak show. But for those on stage, these are the worst of days. You're most unhealthy that day of the show. You're dehydrated, you're in limited food, you've been overtrained. you're taking some type of diuretic, whether it be natural or not. That day of the show, I, I got to tell you, you look like perfection. Inside, you are just, you're barely hanging on. Colette Nelson knows what muscle competitions are all about. For the past six years, she's been a professional bodybuilder and enjoys looking the part. I know I make people curious because they're seeing a woman, but yet they're seeing muscles. So even if they yeah, I mean, you look like, like it, kind of a cross between Britney Spears and Thor. Right. And I think they, people find it interesting. Nelson and her rivals on tour have a unique and unenviable distinction in the entire world of sports. No other female athletes anywhere sacrifice so much for so little in return. According to Nelson, women like her are driven by a disease, which they say is the opposite of anorexia. It's bigorexia. When you look at yourself in the mirror, what do you see? I never see that I'm big enough. I always feel like I'm not good enough. Um, it's sad to say that, but it's true. I always feel like I gotta work harder. Which is why Nelson can often be found here, training in the gym, for at least four hours a day, six days a week. The goal is to get bigger and bigger. It's also the reason she carefully prepares and eats six low-fat, high-protein, no-carb meals every single day. We have to make a choice what we're going to eat six times a day, and certainly the monotony of it, I don't care who you are, you know, gets to you. Is there any testing by the International Federation of Bodybuilders? Once a year, they draw from a hat and they test one person. Once a year, one person? Yes. So there is Come one. Come on, That's, that constitutes the testing? Yeah. Officials at the International Federation of Bodybuilders, the sport's governing body at the pro level, declined to speak with Real Sports about drug use or their testing procedures. What are some of the negative effects on women? And that's what I want. Of ingesting so much testosterone. Absolutely. Hair growth on the face, facial hair. That doesn't go back. Uh, clitoral enlargement. I know some girls that, you know, it's like that big. Come on. It's true. To keep looking like a woman isn't easy in bodybuilding. Colette Nelson says working out so much makes women lose their breast tissue. So implants are common. She's had her breast done four times. And then there's the Botox and skin tightening and hair and makeup, and the ever-present, not-quite-natural tan. It's a world Nelson knows so well that she started helping other competitors prep for shows, like on this day in a Chicago hotel room. First hour is the two coats in the morning. It's got to dry, it's got to settle into the skin. Finally, the pose down. This moment is what bodybuilders live for. It sure isn't for the money, especially for the women. For instance, at the Arnold Classic this year, the difference in prize money between top man and top woman was more than $100,000. I just did a pro shop. Third place gets $500. 500 $500. Are you kidding me? That didn't even cover your airfare. It doesn't even cover your airfare. And, and the winner gets... What did the winner get? 3000 Do you think that's really worth it? $3,000. I mean, that's nothing. So there is absolutely no economic gain in competing. In fact, you're going to lose... I always say, I am going to be the 75-year-old in the little wheelchair with, you know, in the back of the wheelchair, I'll have these little dumbbells or little Get kind of bands. Get out. I cannot see myself stopping. 